Welcome to Hotline TV. I'm Quinn McCord. And I'm Amy Walter. Okay, Quinn. I don't know. Not long ago, you and I were sitting here talking about Republicans' big problems in the Senate races, and now things aren't looking so bad. No, nope. Is this true? No, things aren't that bad. I mean, you know, the last couple cycles, you can say Republicans had a bad map, right. and they had, uh, you know, they did a bad job with it. They still kind of have a bad map. Let's, that's the floor ourselves. There are still, you know, five open seats. Well, that's the map. It's really retirements. Retirements, yes. Right, is the issue. But, but you know, they're doing a good job with, with what they have. I mean, right. So let's start. Let's start with the, the places where I think they have open seats and things look better than maybe we thought they would look. Yeah. All right, Missouri. Missouri. Roy Blunt is probably not going to have a, ser a serious primary challenger. He may have one or two. From but the pheasant raising from the pheasant state plucker. senator. Fe yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, if Sarah Steelman looks like she might run for his house, she's she, going to run for his house. So. Look, I, what is she doing right now? She spends a lot of time tweeting about how much she doesn't like Roy Blunt and the insiders. Now, maybe she's going to surprise us all, and all of a sudden she'll have filed an FEC report with a million dollars or something. Mm -hmm. But I kind of doubt that's happening. In fact, I sincerely doubt that's happening. He needs to show a good FEC report, and he knows it. And I think that he's been focusing on that. Now, I don't know if it's going to rock the world, but. To not have a primary, to not get bruised up before facing Carnahan is a good deal. Yeah, I mean, it could be worse in Missouri. Yes. Um, you know, Ohio, I mean, Rob Portman had a very good first quarter. Yep. He seems to be kind of sort of doing, doing the state, doing everything right. Um, whereas, you know, his main opponent, Lieutenant Governor Lee Fisher, is appearing shirtless on YouTube. Yeah, that's not a good look. <laughs> I mean, it's really not a good but, look. Although he's in good shape. He is for, in pretty good shape you know, for a 57 year old guy. I, was, I mean, a little hairy. Yeah. But, um, Lee Fisher, but, I wish I looked like you when I took my shirt off. Well, maybe um, we can, I know. Well, um, but let's, let's, let's yeah. weigh these two things. Ohio okay. versus Missouri. Which one is the more vulnerable for Republicans? Um, I think Missouri has to be considered more, more vulnerable. Abs agree, um, agree. I'm just not that impressed right now with the Democratic field in Ohio. And not just because of the shirtless thing. I just think Fisher looks like he's been around a long time. There's not, it's not a new, fresh, time for change kind of message. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and then New Hampshire. New Hampshire. I mean, now, this would be a big story, broken by one Chuck, Chuck Todd. Todd. I mean, it was starting to look like a lost cause, maybe, only insofar as no Republicans in has announced, and they don't have much of a bench. But, you know, they're one sort of, not an elected official, but appointed official by a Democrat. Right. Um, the or reappointed by a Democrat. Reappointed. Right. Um, the Attorney General Kelly Ayotte, um, who is, a, you know, a 40-year-old, nice, you know, eloquent Attorney General, the kind of young, fresh-faced but experience that Republicans need to run oh, these seats. That's absolutely right. I mean, the profile perfect. Who knows what you'd be like as a candidate? Yeah. But the profile perfect. All right. And then the two places where we thought we would definitely see a race. One, David Vitter. Yeah. Right? Nobody's running. No. And I doubt you're going to get Charlie Melanson to give up his seat to go run again. You just wanted David to say Melanson. I love saying Melanson. It just rolls off tongue. It's like Cajun food. Mm. Mm. All right. North Carolina. Um, yeah. Nobody either. No one yet. He, I mean, you know. Schuler, no. And, and they'll say Kay Hagan, you know, she left and then she got back in and was late. I mean, there, there's still time. But, you know, I mean, for, for a state that went for Obama last That's time, right. you think it would be people would be hankering to run against Richard Burr, but it doesn't seem to be happening. All right. And finally, what's going on with the money, right? You know that the White House is committed to raising money for the campaign committees in 2010. And yet, because of the restrictions on who can give that money, lobbyist money, they're going to raise $11 million less tonight for their joint committee fundraiser than Republicans did for theirs with Newt Gingrich, mm. for God's sake. So the president yeah. raising less than Newt Gingrich. This, to me, looks like a big problem for Democrats. And it goes back to the number one issue here for Obama, which is the guy who could raise billions of dollars off the Internet, off low-dollar low dollar fundraising, can't translate that to other candidates, right? Nobody else is going to be able to raise that kind of money. No, no, but, you know, I mean, and this is nothing against Obama. Listen, all politicians, don't they look out for number one first? And, I mean, you know, it, it, it would be kind of the, of questionable hypocrisy if he was to suddenly take a 180 on this and start running money and raising money um, off lobbyists. So, but what if he's raising it for somebody else? You still think that looks like... Well, if he I mean, says, I'm not going to raise money for... Has that ever happened before where you have a candidate like who's, who said they wouldn't take PAC money but did a fundraiser for somebody where PAC money was given? Mm, do I you don't think know. so? Probably. Well, we might have to do some research on that. Yeah, yeah. Research. Anyway, but it does go... It goes to this, which is if we... You know, you'd think control of House, Senate, White House means 
tons of money coming in for Democrats. That might not be the case this year. Yeah. They, they might have had more money in 2008 and 2006. Yes. All not right. as much money as they could be getting. Sure. But um, awesome. Well, All right. you know. So things might not, th we'll end it with this, Quinn, which is we're not saying Republicans taking back the Senate. No. It's just that they may not be getting further in the hole. Yeah. The they, they might break even, which for Senate Republicans isn't a bad, isn't a bad place isn't to a bad be. Place. All right. You know. Well, that is all the time that we have for today. But until next time, I'm Amy Walter. And I'm Quinn McCord. Join us again on Hotline TV.